A good friend, RJ, here. I always like to say that I'm entrepreneurial first and a creative second. So, Did you like high school? I dropped out. Now we're in his awesome production studio. The whole dream was I wanted to be a big beauty video director. The Herfy. Job is complete. Now we gotta go find a whole entire new job. It's tiring. I did not want to be in that situation anymore. He's got an amazing community here in South Florida. Then I ran into you. The confidence that you had in it, and plus I've seen what you was on. Oh, no. We're going after the same clients. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people need content right now? Then one by one, a call came in. He's got a podcast going. We do connect on that as well. We're both really big on communities. We don't love Krispy Kreme. Everyone loves Krispy Kreme. Come on. Plus, he has a rock star list of monthly retainer clients. If she don't have the whole entire package. Don't waste the time. <laughs> don't waste your time. That's not what we do. Diving into tons of stuff throughout this episode. As fun as business is, it can be very lonely, especially and in like the beginning. Girl, that broke your heart. Okay. Well, I'm never going to date a chick like that. You guys don't want to miss this one. I promise you don't. So RJ, man, welcome. Welcome to the show, dude. Damn, appreciate you, man. That's a good ass intro. Hell yeah, I just came up with it all <laughs> off the top of my head, you know? So, um, no, but seriously, appreciate you, one, you know, letting us into your space, kind of showing us the new office and everything that you had going on. Before we get into like where we're at now, I want to go way back. I know your story, it's kind of similar to mine where we're both just kind of lost trying to figure out what to do, had this creative side, never felt it, we fit into what was out there job wise and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of like determined to figure out this other path in life. So how did you first get into content? Let's just start there. How far back we going? Oh <laughs> <laughs> seven, I say 2007. Okay. Uh, film school. First, I wanted to go to school for production, like audio production, audio engineering, uh, being a producer. Dr. Dre was one of my guys that I always wanted to be like yep. that behind the scenes, making all the music, doing yep. all the engineering. And then I did my first video production class and they had us create a short film. So we sh I shot it, I, I directed it and seen it on the big screen. Once I seen that big screen, once I seen the feedback, I was so transferred over to video production and that was it. I was, I was hooked from there, bro. It's interesting. So you were into video production when you went through film school. And then when you first got into business, you were doing photography, right? Yeah. How did that kind of all come about? Yeah, what, so, what was the, the gap between school and... I mean, the whole dream was like, okay, I wanted to do like, be a big video production, um, big a music video director, okay. right? So Hype Williams, Chris Robinson, all of these big uh, music video directors. So I started working with artists from managing their careers and their bookings to like shooting all of their music videos. Um, it was a lot of work and I wasn't getting paid. So I was like, you know what? Um, I need to get some money from the stuff that I'm doing. Um, so I, I took on my first, it wasn't even a photo gig, it was like an event coverage. And then I realized the need for event coverage and I kind of just focused on that. Cause I was like, okay, I could pay my bills doing the event coverage at night yep. and then I could still do, um, you know, I could still network and I could still do music videos on the side as well. Sure. So. Cool. So you got into event photography. How long were you doing that? Event photography, I would say that started in like 2009, 2010. Okay. And I kind of stuck with event photography all the way up to Shit. COVID, yeah. basically. Okay, March. so, all right, so now we're flash forward. So you went to film school, you got into photography, you were doing this for 10 years, you had this big vision. What happened? I know my story during that time. What happened when shit hit the fan? Did you lose all the event work? Um, what was going on? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So I was like, by that time, I was well known in the event space. Okay. So I was already booked out three months in advance. So I had three months of booking. Everything was like exactly what I was working for. Everything was like perfect. You feel what I'm saying? And then, then one by one, a call came in. Oh, we got to um, reschedule. Oh, we got to cancel. Like literally within like, I would say about a two week window, all of my events got canceled. So um, I was like, okay, okay, the events got canceled. I was just still moving though. I was still every day waking up, going to the office, showing up, trying to figure something out. I didn't know what I exactly was doing. I didn't know what to do. I just was not gonna be staying home. I, like, I was gonna be working. So mm -hmm. I was like, fuck it, let me just keep doing something. Then I ran into you. You see me in the office and I went to go for a walk because I was, I was stressed out. I was like, all right, let me just go for a walk. Let me get some fresh air. And then he called me and he was like, hey, I need three actors. I was like, okay, cool, for sure, I could do that. He's like, uh, when you need them? He's like, oh, today. I'm like, oh, shit, okay. 
let me see what, like, like I, I have a pretty good network, so I'm like, all right, let me see what I could, I took it as a challenge, mm -hmm. you know, so I was like, all right, cool, let me um, see, who, see how much people I could get. Um, I had about six people lined up. Out of the six, I think about either four or three of them show up. About three of them showed up mm -hmm. that day. So it was a good testament of like, okay, I do have a good network that I could call on. And out of those six people, three of them showed up. We was able to deliver it for you yeah. on your side. So, I mean, it was good for me. And for me, around. it was like, what happened was a client hit me up being like, hey, do you do photos? We need all this kind of stuff, lifestyle. At the time, we were only doing video. Like, I knew I probably could find a way to make it happen, but with what else we had going on, I was like, we need to just bring someone in. Um, if we can figure out how to start offering the photo packages with their video packages, that'd be great. So I looked at it like, even if I break even and just give RJ everything, it will give us a chance to work together. That will open up the door for a lot more down the road. And like, it's always more fun working with others too. You know, it's like doing projects solo can be a nightmare sometimes. Yeah, not for so sure. So I didn't want to let our client down that we we're doing the videos for. I'm like, no problem. And then it's like, shit, let's figure this out. What, what was it about that um, moment that you was like, oh, let me hit up RJ? Or was it like, hey, fuck it, it, it was I, It was because we had a couple conversations up to that point. I knew mm. you were doing content. And I always looked at like, what skill sets do others have that I could bring to my clients? Mm -hmm. And how also could I learn? Because the way I learned video was not like, yeah, I sold jobs and went and did them. But the first like big jobs I sold, I would just hire someone who knew way more than me. And I would tell them they're hiring me as their assistant producer. Mm -hmm. So that I actually learned what the hell they were doing, how they were doing casting calls, how they were coordinating talent, what they were sending mm -hmm. to them the day before the shoot, outfits, all this stuff. So by the time other things started coming around, it was just like creating the connections and being able to explain clearly to a client, like I can help you in a way. Well, if you can do that and just connect the dots with everyone else, like that's so valuable. Because mm -hmm. think about how long it took to build your network, you know? So that was always my mentality is if I can be the person for my clients, like the one-stop shop, even if I'm not doing it all, but I'm just saying, hey, I know someone. I'll find them and, and I'll handle this for you. And they just keep coming back to me. It's only going to mean as we grew, there would be more business opportunities with them. Okay. So, so how did things pivot out of, like that was one job when you had months lined up, you know, and it wasn't huge by any means. It's like a couple grand, I think. So how did you pivot out of the situation or did events pick back up or how did you figure out those trying times so um so it's you it, it, for me as uh entrepreneur as a like i always like to say that i'm an entrepreneur first and a creative second mm -hmm. um well that's the cleanup version i say i always say i'm a hustler first <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. I, I gotta i know how to make things yep. happen um, you create your own my, luck yeah yeah i mean you said it, it's like i wasn't gonna sit at home and just do nothing and be like oh there's no work it's like get your ass to the office do something it's gonna lead to something one way or another yeah. you know yeah. And that was the same reason we were the only two people there, dude, <laughs> like every day. I got to get around shakers and movers. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? So the cream always going to rise to the top. Like I got to be like constantly doing something. And, and when it, especially when it comes to like staying in the game, it's like I have to have a short term income and a long term income. Mm -hmm. Right. So it may not be paid, but it may be an opportunity. It may be a relationship. It may be something that I could learn that I could actually use to elevate. Yep. So in that instance, I was doing two things at once. So one thing that I was doing was one of my homegirls, she hit me up and she's like, oh, let me pay your phone bill. I was like, okay, you could, you could definitely pay my phone bill, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show up at your office, I'm gonna videotape you and I'm gonna create some social media reels and post it on social media for you, all right? And then mm -hmm. you just pay me your phone bill and you can pay me my phone bill, which is 70 bucks, whatever. Yep. And we do that every week. Cool. And is that cool? And she's like, yeah. I was like. And she said, yeah. I was like, oh, so I just turned 70 bucks into like 280. Yeah. So I was like, hmm, let me do that with four other companies, four other people. Because it's an it's a offer, 300 a month, come on. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show up at your office every week 
and edit the photos and post it for you, it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I did that with five different companies in the midst of like learning, like basically the nuances of like how they use, how they use content, the nuances of their messaging, like how do they describe content and videos and like, how do they talk about it? Mm -hmm. um, how do they describe themselves? So I can know like how to like target and like when I'm creating my own marketing right. materials, how right. to like address them. Um, so I was able to like do a lot, a lot of market research, plus just get by at the same time and also team build. So it was me, Raul, and um, Abdul. We were just working together basically for damn near free. Mm -hmm. But we all seen the value in building that relationship mm -hmm. and building that bond. And so that was one, one thing which was short term, just staying busy, building that connection. And then the long term gain was the, the coaching. So you introduced the concept to me that I, I, I'm sure I heard of coaching before, but it was just something that I've never met somebody that was like, oh, yeah, I got a business coach. And you, the confidence that you had in it, and plus I've seen what you was on, I was like, oh, business coach. Like, why would he need a business coach if he's already successful? He's doing big things. But I'm like, damn, business coach. All right, well, let me Google this concept of people having business coaches. So I realized that a lot of successful people, majority of the six, mm -hmm. successful people, even till this day, still have business yeah. coaches. So that's when well, dude. I like, like even uh, LeBron James, he has three coaches. You know, like and he's why? LeBron James, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, because he wants to be the greatest, and to be the greatest in any realm, you need others overseeing, because you're so in it. You mm -hmm. know, day to day. So it's just having that someone else who's not in the go 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 to be like your high level advisor to be like, hey, a month ago you told me you were going to stop doing that. Here we are, thirty days later, you're still doing that. You know, it's like, oh, shit, I didn't realize 30 days went by. Or yeah. vice versa, like, hey, you said you were going to, you know, go get this client. What have you done mm -hmm. to do that? You mm -hmm. know, like that accountability, accountability yeah. and just oversight for mm -hmm. me. And then and then knowledge. So, yeah. So you were looking into coaching. You thought it was maybe something for you. Yeah, definitely. Once I once I heard the so you could you could listen to someone and you know where it's something that's valuable that you could apply to your life. And once I know it's something that's valuable, I don't really hesitate. The more you think, the more you like spin around in circles, like like we always say, think long, think wrong. Like, hey, what, what you what you waiting for? Let's get it happen. Let's let's make it happen. So we get, I went with the business coach. I was like, all right, I'm going with this business coach. The thing about business coaching and the thing about information in today's time, it's a lot of information that's out there. It's a lot of people that's coaching. It's a lot of people that's telling you to do this and tell you to do that. There's so many books and podcasts and then different things yep. that's out there. The discipline is being able to pick your one coach and only listen to that coach. And no matter what he tells you to do, if he say he jumps off, well, don't jump off the building. But if he tells you to do something, you do it. You feel what I'm saying? You only listen to that one coach. You don't listen. You don't read the other books. Yeah. You don't watch the other videos, yep. and at least in that time period when you're focused on learning that new skill. You go into it at a space of being just totally open, totally blank canvas, be humble, like you don't know anything and just really just absorb the information um, and just listen to that coach and actually then apply that information. So it's like, OK, we could learn some really, really great stuff. You could read this good book, but how much of that are you actually going to be able to apply? For sure. So that was kind of like the I feel like one of the it was a unique, a unique thing for me, but me going through that. I was then able to understand the value of that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's kind of like you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, um, I remember my first programs. I think the first one I joined was like 500 bucks. And when I was first starting, I was like, that's insane. You know, and now I think the last one I signed up for was 20 grand. And it's still just like, that is insane. That's a new car. But like, I know the value will 10x from over the next 12 months with just like, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And every time I've invested in that, it's only led to this next like big jump um, in business. But you said one thing, like only learn from that one program. I'm curious to know your take on that because I have the same thought. Yeah. So like I always try to take it, take it, take a step back and be like, why am I even joining this course? Right. What, what do I want to get from it? Right. So like taking a step back and be like, OK, I'm joining this course to learn how to run ads or how to be learn the operations of video production. Right. Yeah. Just do that. 
Yeah. So like if you're going to be taken in that, you're only have, you only have so much time and energy and information. So it's really just having a clarity of like what you want. Mm -hmm. so, clear, so clarity, the opposite of that is confusion. And the easiest way to get confused is by listening to multiple people, yeah. multiple philosophies at once. Exactly. You know, like that's just the easiest way to be confused. And in order to obtain, do what you need to go, your goal of video production operations, you want to master that process or learning how to run ads or just marketing and how to position yourself to attract the right clients. If you're trying to do that and you're listening to five different coaches on that same same one thing that you're trying to do, you're doing the opposite. You want to yeah. learn it, right? Because yeah. the, the reason why you're listening to five coaches is because you want to learn this one thing. But you're actually doing the opposite by listening to five coaches. If you want to actually learn that thing, just listen to one of them. Pick one of them that suits your style and just only listen to him. Yeah. And you're guaranteed to master that one thing that you're trying to, to really hone in on, you know? How I look at it, it's like, it's getting all your energy in one direction. You know, if you were look at a spear and you got like, like if it's the sun and it's rays of light coming out, you know, and you're only going 10% in each way, you're only going 10%, whereas one direction, all of that, you know, you're at 120%. And it's like the best way to learn is immersion learning, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when you get to that, like paralysis by analysis, that's what's happening. You you have too much noise from too many different sources coming in. Because Gary Vee's telling you to post 48 times a day. And then I'm sometimes saying, you don't even need to post. Mm -hmm. Call a client, get them on the phone, like walk in their office, you know, go to a networking event. Um, like, so there's different ways to approach things. And get some Krispy Kremes. Right, bro. There's lots of ways to do yeah, stuff. Like, hey, I got Krispy Kremes. Who don't love Krispy Kremes? Everyone loves Krispy Kremes. Come on. Another good trick is get barbecue. And like, if it's an office that, uh, if your client has an office with lots of other employees, spend 50, 100 bucks and bring in some catered barbecue because all the employees love you. And then the boss has to keep working with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just, they're happy every time you come show up. Like, oh man, employee loves when you come. And normally it's like, oh no, the video guys are here again. So it's like, who wants Krispy Kremes and barbecue? Mm -hmm. Let's go. <laughs> but that's like, that's, that is something that I say and we joke around about it, but it's actually a great way to build those relationships, those long-term yep. relationships, right? Right. We know why, because we have clarity on what kind of relationship we want. We want a long-term relationship with our clients. So in order to do that, hey, I spend a, a hundred bucks every once in a while to just get everybody some Krispy Kreme donuts. So they celebrate me when I, <laughs> oh, he's cool. He always brings Krispy Kremes when he come by. Like, yeah, right. It's the easiest thing to do. Right, and people like to work with those they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you brought up, like, you want to work with that client long-term. Mm -hmm. When I first started in video, there was no such thing as a long-term client. It was like, we did one video, we didn't hear from them for six to 12 months. Maybe they would come back, maybe they wouldn't. How are you finding ways to work with your clients consistently over that period of time? Long-term, I would say like, being able to find clients to work with long-term, it's gonna be a process of, like, like I was saying, like really knowing what you want from the relationship and what you don't want from the relationship and saying no. Like to, to the ones that come in and be like, oh yeah, I just want you to do this really quick. So you're um, just, no, just to clarify, fit. you're saying like, if you offer video and they're asking you to do social media posting and uh, build out their CRM, you should be saying no to the stuff that you're not actually doing and just focusing on the one area. If you have the capabilities to do social media, right? And you may not have the capabilities, you may have, uh, um, someone you could collaborate and execute these things, right? If it's in your wheelhouse, I would say, yeah. I was, when I was talking about saying no, it's mostly about how do you want this relationship to be? Like, is it gonna be something that's, I could get paid every single month? That, that, that's yeah. allowed us to get out of that, like constantly hunting for new jobs. Like that's the worst feeling to be in. Yep. So a lot of times what it takes is us to go through some shit that we don't like and for me, hunting for a new job, every, after every job was done, it's like, okay, job is complete. Now we gotta go find a whole entire new job and find a whole, it's like, it's tiring. Yep. And it's like, I did not wanna be in that situation anymore. 
So I was like, in order for me to get out of that situation, I need to know that I need clients that I could work with on a month to month basis. Now, what do I want from those clients? How do I want to feel in that relationship? You know, that's that's important to define because I feel like a lot of people, even in every walks, in every type of thing, whether it's political, whatever it is, they they asking for something. They saying they complaining about something, but they didn't even ask for it. Mm -hmm. They don't even have it defined of exactly mm -hmm. what they want. You know, they complaining about, oh, this girl is this or that. It's like, bro, do you know what you want from a right. girl? Like, yeah. the, define what you want and yep. get it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, it's just as simple as that, you know. And then the ones that don't fit the, the standard, you say no. Yeah. You know, you drop them off. You be like, you, you, whatever it is, you get them out of your car, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, don't lower their standard and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just, you know what? Her ass is fat. You know what I mean? Like, if... If she don't have the whole entire package, what you're looking for, don't waste the time. <laughs> don't waste your time, you know. But like, yeah, that's 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 why I feel like is the most important thing is really like knowing what you want from the relationship, knowing what will work best for your business model, you know, knowing how you and your team work best. You feel yep. what I'm saying? So it's like it's not just you that's going into war or going into this bit, going into this business and doing the work. Yep. It's you and your team. Yep. So it's like okay, now I have to make sure that. I'm getting paid, the company getting paid, and the team getting paid. So how can I do that in an effective way? And that's a long-term relationship with a client. Yep. So being clear on like what that ex what that journey looks like. So that onboarding process, I found out that was a very very important thing in being able to establish a long-term relationship, right from the from the very beginning. Once once she does sign that paper and they pay the deposit, the next step is like okay. We're just scheduling our first strategy call. We're going to do a kickoff call. You know, the next step is doing a kickoff call with your team. So that like, hey, we got this new client that we're working with. This is what they're looking to do. You know, scheduling the next kickoff call. Like me, I always tell my clients from the very beginning, hey, these next two to four weeks, we're literally just doing strategy. That's yep. it. That's all we're doing. We're going we're gonna to do a strategy call once a week. All right. So is that something that you're okay with? Or do you are you are you looking to just create content right now? You know, so if they say, oh, I just I want to create I want to shoot something next week, though. I'm like, that's not how we do it. We're in phase one, like kind of just stand to the gun, understand, right. stand to your guns, understanding your your process and not allowing the um, client to like bully you around or tell you yep. how to do it. You know, so I feel like just having that clarity of like not only who you want to work with, but your whole entire production process, yep. you feel me, is like, that's a way of like establishing or getting those long-term relationships that you're looking yep. for. All right, so let's say I'm a viewer right now and I'm watching, and all that sounds fantastic, mm -hmm. but it's like, how the f do I do that? <laughs> in other words, how do I define what I want in a relationship when I don't know what I don't know? Or you don't know the smartest thing to be offering to get more retainers coming in the door. What would you recommend to someone? Um, so if you've had experience with clients, I will always say, for me, this is what I do, right? The worst client that you worked with, the headache client that you worked with, you just take some time and think about what, why do you hate working with yep. that client? What are some of the pain points that it is? And then now you know what you don't want. Yeah. So anybody that re re reminds you or have any, any, any of these traits, you feel me? They're impatient. They 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 over um, overshadowing every part of the project. Yeah. You know. Okay. I can't work with that client. Like, what are some of the traits that? Is there anything that I could have noticed earlier on in the conversation? That. Oh yeah. You know. So like, first, pick somebody you did you you don't like dating. Like, you know what I mean? The girl that broke your heart. Okay. Well, I'm never gonna date a chick like that. You know what I mean? Yep. So like, the the one bad client. That's one of your best ways of learning what you don't want from a client. Right. And then from that, you, you just make the opposite, the opposite of what you do want. Yep. You know, so if you say a client that is unsure about their goals, the opposite of that, a client that is very sure about their goals and is willing to share what their goals are yeah. and objective for their business yep. and goals behind creating video content. They're just not trying to create video content for the heck of it. So I realized that if when it's somebody that just want to create content, but hey, I just want to do a video. We're not a good fit. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Thanks for the yeah. heads up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or artists too. Like I don't like working with artists because I'll hear this a lot. I don't even care about selling. I just want my art to be out there. 
And it's like, well, if there's not a business behind it, then like you're not going to see the value in giving me money to grow that business mm -hmm. because you're just looking at it like this is fun, a couple hundred bucks, this or that, you know, like it's that's not what we do, right? We're looking for serious business owners that have taken the time and the energy to actually put the work in. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone's like, oh, I have this idea, it's going to crush. What have you done in the past? Nothing, not interested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why haven't you started if it's going to crush? Haven't sold anything. So that could be a, that could be a, a line like, hey, okay, you have, you're a great designer. You're a great fashion designer. How many pieces have you sold? Oh, I haven't sold any. Okay. Or a lot of We're times. We're not a good fit. A I lot of times you. now since doing the coaching stuff more, I get people that want to partner on coaching programs. And a lot of times they've even built it like, hey, it's great. Everyone will buy it. I just need help marketing it. And it's like, well, if it's great and everyone will buy it, why haven't they bought it so far? Because the way I build programs is I build it for, I market first and then build what the people want mm -hmm. versus like taking a guess, spending six months to build something that no one actually cares about. So um, there's all that's, those like little things that come in. That's crazy. That's, that's exactly my philosophy as well. So Oh yeah. I'm, and so I'm, where, I'm, I was, where I was hoping you were yeah. going before was, dude, just join a program where they literally tell you exactly what to do because yeah. that's how I learned everything. I didn't know who the good clients were. Yes, like there's some process of elimination, but it was like, you know, the first time I started looking at companies over a million dollars was for coaching. It's just like, if they're not doing a million dollars a year in revenue, don't consider them right now because they're too small. They haven't invested in marketing in the past. They don't have teams or systems behind the scenes. So once this is implemented, they're going to get a fast win and be like, holy shit, I trust you with everything. What else can we do? It's gonna, they're going to get three clients in the door be so busy with operations that you're not going to see them for six to 12 months and you're going to break even on the project. You know? mm -hmm. So for me, it was always just learning from others. And even now, like I bought two programs in the last two weeks, $2,000 programs. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying, one was a, about viral style, like, like non speaking content. And mm -hmm. the other was viral talking head content. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to learn. And I got, three to five points from each of these programs that were just so small, but I was like, boom, worth it. Let's bring these into our system and let's move on. So I think long-term, like my, one of my favorite lines is like, work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. Because I know you saw just the way I did once we actually shifted and invested our energy into learning more about paid ads and content strategy and just like, honestly being able to have those high level conversations with clients like probably doing the same work, we tr three to five X our prices mm -hmm. to do the same exact deliverables, the same amount of work, but we could explain it better, walk a client through it better, know that they understood it better. Like, I think it's the positioning, especially when we're talking about dealing with clients. I think it's the positioning and the confidence, yeah. right? Because like you're on a call with somebody that has a million dollar company, a multi-million dollar company, and you have to have the confidence to be like, hey, this is how it's done. You know, you got to have that confidence of like, I need this to actually get this done. Like, this is your goal. Like, you got to have the, yep. like, you really got to know how to position yourself. It's like, it's like a mindset thing. It's like you almost, for me, I almost approach it in the sense of like, I don't need this client. Yeah. Even if I need this client, in my mind, I'm like, I just remind myself. Do you have some high level pre-framing things that you always like to kind of like tie into your process in the beginning? Like what are some of the main things you're really letting clients know up front to kind of set this standard? Definitely that, that, that strategy. I always say like, hey, we have three pillars, right? Our first pillar is strategy. That's gonna be the first two to four weeks of us working together, right? The next, the next pillar is content creation. So that involves all the video marketing, all the, all the ad copy, all of the actual production of it. Yep. So that's, that's gonna take you from month two, that's gonna be about three months. Mm -hmm. And then once we're done with that phase, then we actually get into distribution, which is going on social media, running the ads, whatever the case may be. So before you even see anything on social media, we're looking at about a four month process. Yep. Are you okay with that? Like, yep. you know what I mean? Like yep. that's, that's kind of yep. like what it is. It's like, exactly. it's, it's getting their mind from thinking that when they call me today, that I'm gonna actually pick, pick my, get my whole team together and start shooting for them tomorrow, actually filming and shooting for them tomorrow, and then posting on their social media next week, right? Yep. That's not a realistic um, expectation. Now, they right. may have real goals, and they, 
what's up? I, I rock with gold. That's I'm all I'm very goal oriented, you know, but the deadline of that goal is not realistic. Right. So it's kind of just framing them and just saying that, yeah, it's great that you have these goals. And I love that because I'm a very goal oriented person. So we mm -hmm. aligned there. Right. But this deadline or this expectation of you being able to get this thing done right now, that's that's not how we do it. We play the game to be ahead of the game, not behind it. Right. So what we want to do is build a plan first. So that way we have a strategy for the next six months. And then the next three after the first month of strategy building, the next three months, what we're going to do is a bunch of content creation for your company, customized stuff for you. And then what we do after that is getting it out to the getting it out to the to the um, to your audience, to your target yeah. audience. Um, and the work doesn't stop then either. Right. So we have to stay constant with getting that feedback, having that open feedback and iterating as we go along. So just because the first month of when we launch on social media is not a success, that don't mean that we're not going in the right direction, right? So it's kind of just letting them know like, hey, just setting your expectations. When we launch, it's a possibility you might get three or four clients in the first month. Yep. But there's also a possibility you might get none. Right. And it's okay because we're, it's, it's, it's fishing. You're kind of like, you're getting the feedback. You're trying to figure, you're trying to figure that market out yeah. as much as possible. That, so a, a big thing people always get stuck on is like, but like, what if you're not showing results? And the biggest thing I say to them is like results is, let's use your fishing analogy. You know, we went out to the pond, we had 10 lures, you know, we put a lure on each fishing pole and casted it out and nine of them didn't get a hit, but one did. And we know to focus all our energy on multiple more of this lure. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I explain like what we're doing. So we got a result. It was a great result because we eliminated nine out of 10 directions to go with that first test. Now we're going to be that much more laser focused. But just so you know, yes, this stuff does take times and I'm not making you sign like a 12 month like retainer. It's month to month. But like if you're not looking at this, like we have 90 days coming in to actually play around and get things going, it probably isn't the right fit. Mm -hmm. You know, so just letting them know, like you need to be looking at this long term. If in two weeks you don't get exactly what you're looking for, get the client fires you and say, mm -hmm. you're not doing a good job. It's all about setting those expectations ahead of time. Cool. I want to switch gears because as fun as business is and, you know, as much joy as it brings us and everyone in the world, <laughs> because entrepreneurship is the greatest thing of all time. It's more than just business and making money. And I think this space and everything that you're doing in the community is a testament to that. Mm -hmm. And I know part of my journey was like, yes, I love helping clients. I love helping them build their business, but I also love helping creators that are either stuck in a nine to five or trying to figure things out or, you know, trying to get their first clients or trying to get their first team members in place, in the right systems, like giving back on that front. Cause that's how I see we raise kind of the industry as a whole. So how did you first kind of get going with the community aspect and like, what came first? Were you doing the podcast? Did you start doing the meetups? Like, when did this space come about? Why did this come about? Like, fill me in on that side of the journey. Yeah, so um, meetups was first. Um, the reason for the meetups is like, like, so this is my analogy. I always say this with everybody, right? So it's like, I look at creatives as mutants, like X-Men. I'm a big X-Men fan. And like, out of all the X-Men, I view myself as Wolverine, you know, like a lot of people say I'm Professor X because I'm always finding or looking for new new mutants. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> with with yeah. unique creative yeah. skills. Um, so like that's that's where it came out for me is like me being Wolverine, me being somebody that's alone all the time or somebody that's just kind of just going out and getting things done yep. on my own. Yep. And it's like that. that that's bro. Entrepreneurship could be pretty lonely, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially as a creative, it could be very lonely, and then it and then it has that other air of like competition, like people like being competitive, and like it's like that's not that's not what I got into it for. So my whole thing was like, okay, let's meet up once a let's let's just meet up once a month, so that way we could refuel, we could recharge, we could um, share best practices. Um, yeah, complain about clients. Yeah, uh, like, dude, that yeah. was like my favorite thing. <laughs> the co-working, just like everyone would just bitch about like client work, and mm -hmm. just like everyone worked in different industries, and it was like, ah, oh, this feels so good to yeah. just talk to someone about this stuff, dude. Because yeah, it can be very lonely, especially and, in like the beginning. You and know? nobody will understand it unless you're a creative or unless you're an entrepreneur. And it's like I can't complain to 
to my cousin that worked in a nine to five. He's like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, I you can just hang out at the pool all yeah, day. Yeah. What are you complaining about? <laughs> yeah, bro. So it's, it's, it's a totally different thing. And I felt like just being around other creatives, that's going to not only, I'm always trying to stay ahead. Right. So my, one of my biggest things is being around people that inspire me. So creatives inspire me. So I'm like, okay, the more I could be around other creatives, the more I could learn, the faster I could get ahead, the more I'm gonna apply some of the things that they're saying. And a lot of times, the, that's a, a lot of times creatives don't even understand that they're a mutant, that they have a superpower. Yeah. And it's sometimes just being able to wake them up and be like, yo, bro, you realize you're great, right? Like, I'm just saying, like, you inspire me. Well, dude, I mean, I just got you. chills because for me, like, my breakthrough was, and this was after, like, six, it was like a six-day workshop of just intensive, like, personal development stuff. And like the epiphany I had was like, I literally continuously tell myself I'm not that smart because I have ADHD and like growing up with that, they kept just being like, get tested. This kid can't pay attention. I didn't give a shit about history. And like, I don't even know what else we were learning. Um, so for 30 years, like my story to myself was like, I'm not that smart. And like, I can't do those things. Mm -hmm. It literally flipped by listening probably to one podcast um, it might've been Richard Branson where he's like, it's my superpower. My brain goes 10 times faster than everyone else. So I'm able to pro problem solve like this. You know, I'm able to pivot in an instance where some people like can't do that. Mm -hmm. Like it is everything I've meant to do. And when I started doing business while you did have those lonely days, like, I'm like, this is everything I've been looking for. And like, when I went to go try a job, I'm like, what is this? This is what people do for the next 40 years. Like you just do this, mm -hmm. like this is insane, you know, but like going after it in business, I was like, this is my calling. And if I didn't have, you know, I was lucky enough. I saved a lot of money at the dealership. I could move back home with my parents to save money when I first started going like little things like that. I know helped me along the way, but I know a lot of other people can't do that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do we just keep bringing people up and teaching them the things I mean, your weakness is always your superpower. What they say is your weakness is always your superpower. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, hey, bro, you, you great because that's your superpower. And I feel like for any um, photographers or videographers that's just starting, um, one of the things that I've noticed a lot of is like every, every single videographer or every single photographer, as soon as they start, they want to start their own agency. They just want to start their own company. And it's like, why would you do that? Like, bro, I've been doing this shit for a minute. And I ain't, I've been doing it for at least uh, 10, 10, 12 years before I was like, all right, all right, all right, I'm gonna try and do it on my own. And when I was deciding to do it on my own, it was only to create more opportunities for, you know what I mean? Like that was like the whole mission behind it. Yep. So like in the very, very start of it, the best way that we do it is by collaborating with creatives, yep. with other production companies. So like for me, I would just, get really great at my craft and add value to other companies. So then like even in even when I was doing the event thing, I would have like five other event companies that would hire me. Yep. So I don't have to find new clients. Right. I just work with these production companies. Yeah. They're cool as hell. Yeah. They value my input. I'm easy to work with. I make them look good. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're gonna yeah. always oh oh RJ is gonna be there. Oh I love RJ. Yeah. They're not my client, but they love RJ. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. like I feel like a lot of times where people get into that, that mindset of like that scarcity mindset where it's like, okay, I'm going to go cover a job for a production company and, you know, try to like get a client from it. It's like, nah, bro, just be cool. Just yeah, do, well, do dude, I feel, I feel like when I and, first told you about like the programs I was going through, there was like that sense of like, wait, why are you just telling me this? Because it's awesome. Like, dude, this changed everything. Check this out. And it was almost too good to be true because you do meet those people that are, oh, no, we're the same. We're going after the same clients. Mm -hmm. and it's like, do you know how many people need content right now? Like billions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like whether they're trying to grow a personal brand, their own company. That's the best thing about it, being able to have people that you could trust, people that's, that's on that same, same level. They, have, they, they know they special power and they refer work to you. You refer work to them. You keep that flow going. And then when they're in town, they could either work on set with you. You could work on set with them. It just makes it a lot easier when you're, when you're not just like trying to bring in new, especially when you're starting out, just trying to bring in clients. I just work with other production companies. Like, yep. why would I go and try and bring in clients? You know how much, you don't want to deal with that. Like, especially right off the top, like just getting in the game, you get yeah. your first camera, you want to just work with clients. It's like, 
why would you want to do that? When I'm getting in the game, the I just want to have fun. Like, I want to yeah. just shoot. Well, dude, I still do that. Like, I still <laughs> take on free shoots at times, yeah. especially when it's in stuff I haven't done in the past. I'm just like, look, I'd rather work for free, just provide as much value and learn as much as possible. Moving forward, if you guys want me involved, we can talk about numbers then. But, like, I'm not even fully sure what's involved right now. So I'd rather just, like... And that, that's, like, how I got into travel, bro. It was That's how you get those big clients. <laughs> right, exactly, because then you get in the door, and then, then you become a necessity. All right, I had another question for you. If you had to go back and do it all over again, what would you do differently? Mm, what would I do differently? I would learn. I would definitely have me a coach off top. That's the first thing that I'm getting. I'm getting a, I'm getting a business coach from the very beginning. Yep. And then I would dive more into the operations, like the systemizing the operations. Mm -hmm. That'd be my my first two steps. I'm going to, or I mean, I could did go you, into sales. Did you like high school and like were you a student? I dropped out. Yeah, <laughs> it's so I funny to me because yeah. like like you're like me. Like I love learning right now. Like yeah. I like give me more programs, more workshops, more mm -hmm. like. Even going to business conferences now, I'm yeah. like, dude, there, I have so much fun. But like in high school, I read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Never knew it was the same person. It was the most confusing book of all time. <laughs> like, and just like, I, I didn't care about anything, you know? So it's so funny to see that you were very similar on that front where it was like, had zero concern over school because we didn't get it and see how it fit into like what we wanted to do. Now, when we know we can just like, create our own reality it's like shit all we got to do is just like kind of learn some stuff and put it in place and mm -hmm. keep thinking big and keep making moves and like look where we're at now yeah I, I feel like that's probably why we do connect on that as well but that's probably why you we both want to do coaching so much that's yeah. why we're both so really big on community yeah because it's like everybody's like oh you're dumb oh da, da, da. like like it didn't fit in in school well where can people check you out what's the best place insta yeah, Instagram, Content Factory Media, everything Content Factory Media. So website, contentfactory.media, Instagram, so Facebook, all that, Content Factory Media. Hell yeah. Um, me, R-J-D-E-D, -E -D, like the deed on your house. You know, R-J-D, That's right. Mr. Good Deed, Brother Deed, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, R-J-D online on, on social media and then YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Content Factory Media. Yeah, and if you guys are in South Florida, he's doing monthly events all the time. Um, I'm going to be doing one coming up as well with him. So be sure to come check it out and just get connected with the community because it's a ton of fun. We learn a lot and a lot of business ends up coming out of this because it's not just creators, but we also get entrepreneurs that come through. It's a good community. So, dude, appreciate you Definitely, man. taking appreciate the time it. to uh, invite me to your studio and come on my show. But... Uh, <laughs> Maybe we can get the RV in here next time. You might be able to back that bitch <laughs> in here. Some... Cool, dude. Well, appreciate the time again. And uh, we'll keep making moves and we'll check in with you guys, I'm sure, another year or two and, and show you the, the new evolution of his empire. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace.